Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate earthquake load. Indian standard recommends two types of magnitude of earthquake force to design. First one is maximum considered earthquake MCE, which is the most severe earthquake that, it, that can occur. Next is design based earthquake, which can occur at least once during the design life of the structure. This is given by MCE by 2. Uh, different design limit states for design. So there are three. First one is serviceability limit state. In this design, we will consider MCE for the design. Okay, that is the maximum earthquake load. And in this case, we should design such that sh there should not be any damage. Okay, for example, uh, in design of hospitals, atomic power station, because this damage can can be like more loss of life and cost okay so in this uh, designs of this structures we have to consider serviceability limit state second is damage control limit state in this the damage can be repaired so there will be a damage but this can be repaired in this uh, design so it considers design based earthquake for design so in this we are considering less uh, earthquake force that's why we have to design it with some ductility. Third one is survival limit state. In this, the damage which cannot be repaired. Okay. So we have to reconstruct again. We, the, the damage cannot be repaired as in the case of two. So, but there should not be any loss of life in this survival limit state. The above two are based on elastic design. These two methods are for elastic design and this is for plastic design in this case the full ductility is carried out you can see in this we have uh, written limited ductility in this full ductility is carried out by theory of plastic hinge formation and it is designed for less than design based earthquake load so here the maximum earthquake load then in this case design based earthquake load here less than this similarly here more ductility is given here less okay here not required Definitely not given because it is designed for full earthquake load. Then base shear. Base shear is the maximum lateral force due to earthquake on the base of the structure. The structure is designed for far less base shear than the base shear that would be required if it were to remain elastic during the earthquake. So the design base shear is equal to elastic base shear okay by response factor and this response factor or this design base shear which we have reduced the elastic base shear because this reduction depends on the ductility of the structure and over strength due to partial safety factors because we are in design we use safety factors partial safety factors like 1.5 so uh, for this 1.5 and also we are providing ductility we can reduce the design base shear Moment resisting frame, two types. One is ordinary moment resisting frame, another is spatial moment resisting frame. This is the moment frame, moment resisting frame, but it is designed with ductility. Then effects of earthquake forces. The design earthquake loads can be applied on structure by one is equivalent static method. So this is given in clause 7.6 of IS 1893 part 1 2016 in this method the regular buildings with height less than 15 meter and in seismic zone 2 are designed okay so uh, there are four seismic zones 2 3 4 5 because uh, previously we had 5 but 1 and 2 has been clubbed to seismic zone 2 so more information you can get in the video uh, another video that I have given on ductile designing. Next is dynamic analysis in this for all other buildings. Okay, that is greater than 15 meter and in other seismic zones. Also, if the height is greater than 15 meter in seismic zone 2, that also we have to design using dynamic analysis. So, if first one is first equivalent static method, if we refer 7.6 clause, that uh, design base shear is given by VB 
equal to AH into W, where AH is the design horizontal seismic coefficient, and this is calculated by either seismic coefficient method or response spectrum method. So this is a static method, this is a dynamic method. And W is given by seismic weight of the structure, which is the dead load plus live load. Okay, you can refer to clause 7.4 of IS1893. The lateral forces in each floor level can be calculated by distributing the design weight shear. So this design VB is distributed in proportion to the seismic weight in that floor to every floor. Okay, this is given by 7.6.3 clause. Now coming to this two method, the seismic coefficient method. So this is a static method which is given clause 3.4.2.3 of the old IS code. You can see 1984. So now it has been removed, it's no more used. So in this, the H was given by I beta alpha zero, where I is importance factor and beta is coefficient of due to foundation and alpha zero, so specific coefficient in terms of gravity. So these all values were given in these clauses. But now this is no more used. So we are using response spectrum method nowadays in this method, which is given by Horschner. He has made this, uh, he has produced this response spectra using four strong earthquakes which has occurred in California, USA. So it refers to the average smooth plot of maximum acceleration which is called a spectral acceleration coefficient SA by G as a function of the frequency of the structure for specified damping ratio for earthquake citation at base for single degree of freedom. So if you refer the IS code you will find a plot between SA by G for different damping ratio. So in this method, the AH is calculated by using this formula, Z by 2 into SA by G by R by Y, where Z is the seismic zone factor, I is the impudence factor, R is response reduction factor, and SA by G is design spectral coefficient. Now in the dynamic, dynamic analysis, this is performed as per the clause 7.6, 7.7, I is 1893, 2016, by two methods. One is time history analysis, which is given 7.7.4. In this method, we are calculating the response. Response means finding the displacement, velocity, and acceleration of the structure. So this response is calculated at each interval of time. So because earthquake is a transient load, transient load means it changes with time. The earthquake, you know, it is the uh, it the peaks are ch does changes with time. So this is called as transient load. So at every interval, the response is calculated. In case the response spectrum method, we are using response spectrum uh, method that I have given previous in the previous slide. So using this method, we are calculating the response. Okay, we are calculating the response using this method. So the lateral force in each flow level in each mode can be calculated using design horizontal acceleration coefficient by the response spectrum method. So it is called as response spectrum method. Now, if you see, this is uh, the ground and a structure is there, an earthquake moves in this direction. So, there will be a base shear which will be transferred to every flow. So, you have to calculate Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Okay, so this is how the lateral force is. So, the structure, shear force will be at this level B4, which is equal to Q4, then at B3 is Q4 plus Q3. So, this cumulative. Uh, lateral forces if you add you will get the shear force which is at the basis vb equal to the base shear because this base shear is distributed to every floor so this is the shear force of the structure so different lateral load resistance structures are there like moment resisting frames okay like the beam column system there can be shear wall okay or brace frames so shear wall is a structural member which is used to resist in plane lateral force. So if this is the shear in this direction, in plane direction, it will resist the force, not perpendicular to this, okay, in this direction, in plane. So in moment resisting frames, the structural members are joined together using rigid joints, which transfers the moment. But in case of the brace frames, it is paint connection, so it does not transfer the moments. And 
this diaphragm is a very important term that is used so it's a structural limit that transmits the lateral load to the vertical resisting elements of the structure this uniformly distributed lateral forces from the edge of the slabs are transferred to the frames and walls shear walls so if you see this is the lateral force that is in one floor i have taken if this is the lateral force in this floor this is the slab so this will bend like this you can see normal bending moment diagram so this is the uh, shear force diagram shear force at the ends okay this is this shear force will transfer to the edge to the shear wall okay that's why it is called shear wall like shear force will be transferred so this is how the lateral load transfer path is so the lateral load from the floor or this flow diagram it you can see this is the v max at edges because this is the reaction the shear force at the edges this will transfer to the shear wall so thank you for watching i have given another video will be uploaded solving one example in which we will be calculating this earthquake load